Hello, and welcome to Harsh Critique. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and, well, there's usually a reason for that. It's kind of soul-sucking, but you know what? Let's go over a couple of drafts people submitted and see what we can come up with. But first, I want to give you a warning. The kind of feedback I give in this particular series is not acceptable critique to anyone, anywhere, anytime. The only reason that it's okay for me to do this is because the people who submitted their drafts watched me rip somebody else apart, the very first one was me, by the way, and said, you know what, I want him to do that to me. So, you know, even if someone says to you at some point, here's my draft, Give me some feedback. Be as harsh as you want. No, not like this. Anyway, let's get started. Now, our first draft is from someone called Khaki Dontus. And we're going to go ahead. Oh, what the fuck is this? What? It, why? What? So you decided to send me... Is this deliberate? What... What even... What font is this? Oh. Bad script. Well, this is fantastic. So, I'm not going to read this, but I can see from the length of it that you're running into a serious problem that I see quite often with SCP drafts, and that's that this isn't really an SCP draft. This is an idea that you're taking way too long to pitch. Oh, God, I'm going to read it, aren't I? Yeah, I'm going to read it. Ugh. Object class Keter is to be contained in a 2 meter by 2 meter by 3 meter room <laughs> at Site 88. As to be kept alive at all costs, in the event of its death, the Keter level containment breach is to be declared in a new bubble of laws to be identified in the event of escaping. A Euclid level containment breach is to be declared in... Oh, Oh, is found to be inhabiting another SCP. A member of the O5 Council is to be informed. Yeah, okay. The O5 Council. We'll get them involved in this little tiny thing. And you're like, well, it's a Keter. That means it's important. There are hundreds or even maybe a thousand Keters on the site. Keters are not super important. They're just difficult to contain. It has no corporeal body and thus cannot be seen. However, when inside a host, henceforth referred to as blah, 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 blah. It produces an ultraviolet. <laughs> I almost thought that said ultraviolet, which would have, uh, for this kind of a draft, probably would have even been more realistic. Ultraviolet aura. An aura. An aura? What does that even mean? Like, you just mean like a halo around something? Couldn't you have just said that? Aura is super nondescriptive. Why would you use the word aura? That is semi visible to the. Ultraviolet light is totally semi visible to the human eye. Is it ultraviolet? Or. <laughs> but glows extremely brightly in the UV spectrum. I don't think you mean it's just ultraviolet. It's got to have something in the, in the visible spectrum if it's visible. I don't know if you think you understand what these words mean. It appears parasitic in nature, but also displays properties. <laughs> You do realize that those two things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive and that there's, like, a lot of crossover between the two. It's not a full and clear delineation. Yeah, there's definitive definitions for the two things, but a lot of things are like, are they a parasite or are they a symbiote? I don't really know. You could have just said that instead of, it appears parasitic in nature, but also... Oh, for f***'s sake. Anyway. It uh, feeds on a... M and whenever you use the word appears that, what do you mean by appears that? Does it do it or doesn't it? Like, <laughs> feeds on emotion, and an exchange gives a twisted form of immortality. A twisted form of immortality. Great clinical tone! Where they're able to live through any injury, but they never heal. <sighs> Can be killed through disintegration or severing. Or severing connections between vital organs, and they're not able to live through any injury. It, what you just said, they can live through any injury, and then you're like, except for these injuries. A part of it, blah, 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 it immediately enters the nearest sentient being, is able to pass through any barriers while doing so. Oh my god. Oh, now we've got our test log. 
an orbital satellite, a D-class host inside an orbital satellite, an abandoned island in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. This... Okay, so this test doesn't make any sense, and you want to know why? The orbital satellite, which is probably in a geosynchronous orbit, it says around 40,000 kilometers, which I assume means around 36,000 kilometers, which is around the geosynchronous orbit range. But, <laughs> but like, the idea is, like, it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, so it's far away from all those sentient beings. But it isn't. There's nothing, there's nowhere in the Pacific Ocean that's further than, like, what? Maybe 12? I'm not, I'm not guess. I'm gonna guess here, but I'm gonna say, like, 12,000 kilometers away from a person? <sighs> because, like, for example, Hawaii to California is about 10, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, about 10,000 kilometers, and about 10,000 kilometers to Japan. Like, and that's about in the middle uh, it's, it's a bit further to Japan than it is to California, but still, like, what's wrong with you? There is nowhere on Earth that is 40,000 kilometers away from another person. You... <laughs> that's a really long distance. And that's just across the surface. Just, just to make a point? <laughs> like, even if you were to pass straight through the Earth entirely, you'd still reach other people before you reach something that was 40,000 kilometers overhead. The Earth is like, what, 12,000, 13,000 kilometers thick? I'm not, again, not sure on the exact numbers, but you could just go through the Earth and find someone faster than you could. <laughs> and of course, the numbers work out even better if you go at a direct angle to something else on the side. <laughs> Come on, what is wrong with you? 40,000 kilometers. Oh my god. Yeah, this is the ser this is the problem. This is the problem I continuously run into with people offering me drafts. They're like, "Oh, help me out with this draft," or "Oh, hell, give me some critique on this," and they like give me one paragraph worth of like decently. <sighs> this is what like, yeah, this is an idea that you took too long to pitch. This is not a draft. There's nothing going on here. You've just got, hey, look, why wouldn't it be funny if there was like a creature that like. I don't know, you know, could make you immortal, but, like, you'd still get hurt, and, you know, uh, it's a ghost or something. It's got all these extraneous details that don't go towards the main plot you're trying to push, and you don't really have a main plot, actually, so then it's just a random scatter shot of details. God, ugh, do better. Just do better. I mean, we can go over some of the basic stupidity. you got a 2 meter by 2 meter by 3 meter room, so... You know, what's the big deal? What's a two meter by two meter by three meter room gonna do for you? If it's three meters by three meters by four meters, then it'll escape. Except, no, nothing in the fucking containment procedures or in the description or even in the test log tells me that's the case. What does it matter? Just say a standard humanoid containment cell. And I love that Ant is to be kept alive at all costs, which. I'm fine with the idea of saying, and you can't let this guy die, but you don't gotta say it like that. Like, it's just important that this person not be dead. These are strictly prescriptive containment procedures, so if you say, and is to be kept alive, you don't have to say, at all costs. And also, why at all costs? Do you understand what at all costs mean? At all costs mean, if the end of the world would result from you keeping him alive, you still should do it. And obviously that's not what you mean with this, because it's not that important. It's just a ghost dude that makes you sort of immortal. Look, dude, just find your idea in this, which is a ghost dude that makes you kind of immortal. <laughs> and find the story. You know what your story is? You know, I almost always suggest this because flash fiction is su it gives you such a limited amount of time to really work on a thing. Your story is simple. Find a character who's inhabited by this ghost thing and tell his story. You have a limited number of words and page space and attention from the reader. Just tell the story of the motherfucker who is currently sort of immortal. God, you know I wasn't even gonna fucking read this thing. I swear to God, if you people send me another thing with a fucking special script, font, whatever the hell this is. It's called Bad Script. And by the way, 
appropriate name for this font. Both in the fact that the fucking draft is terrible, and that the font itself is terrible. Oh my god, an ultraviolet aura. That still bothers me. Ultraviolet aura that is semi-visible to the human eye. Then it's not just ultraviolet. It, you could say it emits radiation extremely brightly in the UV spectrum and less brightly in the visible spectrum or something along those lines. You got a lot of semi-scientific words in here, but none of, uh, none of it really matters. I love the if blah 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 is found to be inhabiting another SCP, a member of the O5 Council is to be informed. Which, you know, bringing the O5 Council into anything for, makes no sense to me. Especially with this something this uh, poorly... Something that's this harmless. But of course, if it inhabits another SCP, that could be a problem. If it's a world-ending SCP that you count on, you know, being able to hurt. But, uh, or kill. Well, I guess kill? Because you can always hurt these things. Like, if it inhabited SCP-682, nothing would change. I like how there's no procedures, by the way. Just a member of the O5 Council is to be informed. <laughs> like, you'd think there would be more detailed procedures about, like, if it's a harmful SCP, or if it's an SCP that we count on being able to kill over and over again, so it transfers into somebody else or something else, so it doesn't grow in danger or size or some other bullshit, that they'd, like, have a setup and be like, but, you know, whatever, we'll put it inside, you know, put it in something, that's a good example, put it in something that it doesn't matter. And since they can be injured, just keep them sedated and in a room somewhere. Anyway... You know, I was going to do a second draft today, but I got so distracted by how terrible this tiny little draft was, and I'm pretty sure I've got a long enough video already. <sighs> Thanks a lot, khaki dontas. I swear to Christ, sometimes you people make me want to put my fist through my fucking computer screen. Alright, that's it. Just stop being terrible. That's my advice to you, khaki donuts. If you'd like to have your draft harsh critiqued, leave a comment down below. I'll have a pinned comment, and you can reply to that. I'm sure I'll enjoy whatever you have to throw at me. No more Google Docs. Put it in a sandbox or shut the fuck up. I hate these so fucking much. I'm going to try and compose myself so that I can do my outro in a way that doesn't like make my patrons sound like they're annoying me. I'll be back in a second. All right. I think I'm better now. I'd like to thank these three new Patreon backers. First of all, we've got Goblin Katie at $20, Serpent Throat at $10, and Emily Murphy at $5. All three of these people pledged in the last few days, and uh, I want to thank them very much for adding their support to my Patreon. This is the kind of thing that lets me continue to make great content for you people, you know, content other than what I did today and <laughs> and the more you pledge the closer I get to be able to make this content for a living which is something I never really thought was possible until this year so thank you very much to them and to everybody else on the screen right now I appreciate your support and if you'd like to join them you can go to patreon.com forward slash decimarian there'll actually be a link in the description below and there'll also be a link in the pinned post I put in the comments so go ahead and give that a look Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.